Trendomans, welcome to my Empire of Dirt. Today, an unboxing video. But first, for safety reasons, always keep your dick in the voice. Alright, let's open the package. I think I need to sharpen that knife. It's really dull. So, apparently they put the box cutter inside the box. Clever. Very interesting cutter knife from Bitux, never heard of them. So, ironically, you need a knife to get into the cutter knife. Okay. So, yeah, let's do that. And, hey, it's made from die cast aluminum apparently. Has, uh, oh, wait, no. Oh well, I mean, it feels very plasticky, but it is actually aluminum. So, yeah, it, um, it's the cutter knife. Pretty cheap mass production. Oh, I wouldn't use that line yet. You can see there's a very sharp bore in there that would just chew through every belt. Yay. So, what do we got here? So, got a programming card for this. You see, that will hopefully enable me to drive this jet. So, yay. I don't think we need that knife right now. So let's lay it aside. And uh, I don't think we need to see that. That's not that interesting. So let's get right into it. The TFL T-Jet comes in a yeah, pretty standard cardboard box, no bullshit. And it has a 39mm propeller and um, ooh, a 7mm diameter shaft. Ooh, that's, that's heavy duty. So uh, for comparison, the smaller jet, the 29, only has a 4mm shaft, if I remember correctly. So what do we get else on the box? We have a um, little diagram uh, with the dimensions, but I mean we can we can also get the dimensions directly from the model. So yeah, um, yeah, nothing else here. Yeah, just another picture and uh, let's see. Ooh, it actually comes with a motor. Very cool. So, this is uh, B54270 40 water jet. Mm, catchy name, catchy name. Anyway, it's uh, made from almost full aluminum. So, yeah, it's just uh, building instructions, zombies instructions. Pretty standard stuff, so let's lay that aside. Oh, the foam is uh, nice and thick, pretty fine. Yeah. All right. So what do we get for 399 Chinese or not really Chinese, but dollars? So first of all, we get this. Uh, still on. First of all, we get this nice. Uh, 40 uh, millimeter diameter brushless motor. Um, let me see how long is that actually. Um, it is without the shaft and the cables 76 millimeters. So that's that's pretty long. It's also pretty heavy. Comes with nice gold plated, thick gold plated connectors. 
the wires are a little bit pinched but I don't think that's going to be a problem. It's also all open so it will be easy to clean and repair and stuff like that. Also I like that you can access the rear bearing so you can grease or oil whatever you prefer it um, and uh, you don't have to take it apart uh, every couple runs uh, you know when you put it in a boat and uh, change the oil so yeah that's nice um, also comes with a really nice aluminum cooling bucket I haven't seen such a nice thing um, yeah um, it's a little short but I mean this is all just um, air anyway so it doesn't really matter if it's a little bit shorter uh, five millimeter shaft I think this is a four pole but yeah four pole motor or well, maybe I'm wrong we'll see but it is um, 1400 kV and um, we are with the ESC that I ordered would probably get me about four kilowatt continuous so that's that's a lot of power yeah that's is really nicely machined holy shit and they even put um, decorative paint on there nice also the back plate is held in with uh, with these radial screws so I mean from an engineering perspective that doesn't really make a lot of sense but um, probably makes uh, the whole motor a little bit shorter because you don't need another actual plate like in the front like here actual yeah yeah fancy 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 let's lay that aside So what else do we get? We get uh, all kind of all kinds of mounting materials. Um, this is probably servo uh, side side plates. We got a lot of rubber boots and uh, hull pieces so that uh, we can later put these pins through the back of the hull and of course. The most important of them all, stickers. So yeah, but let's let's get to the boring part, and that is the jet itself. Okay, so this I think is where we will actually need the knife because it's completely welded. Can't really get in there. So let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Mm -hmm. Let me in. Come on. Yep. So the jet is all uh, machined aluminum, no cast parts apparently. And um, yeah, it has wow, it has a full metal um, clutch um, or motor coupler or whatever you want to call it. And it has a really thick shaft, seven millimeters, so that's going to survive a long time. It actually has another another thrust bearing in here. So with the smaller jets, they usually for the thrust bearing they usually use the bearing of the motor itself but in that case it apparently produces so much thrust that they decided to put another bearing in there that's pretty cool and it's even exchangeable it's not just pressed and there's a little uh, ring you can take it out and i don't know replace it when it rusts or whatever so that's cool so what you got here we have steering so on that side oh here's a mounting hose this is where the steering goes so we can steer the nozzle. It's a very nice, a very nice ball nozzle. That's that's so cool. I mean, yeah, it's expensive, but you really apparently, it's actually really worth it. There's very little tolerance, so you will probably lose not a lot of water there. 
Um, yeah, so here we can see the um, the uh, the different uh, different jet parts. We have um, the impeller. We can see the impeller in here. Um, four bladed impeller with overlapping blades. Also CMC machined and actually replaceable, of course. So yeah. Um, but from my experience, um, you don't have to replace them all that often. You can actually just sharpen the um, the blades, and they will work for a long time if you just sharpen them every I don't know ten runs or so. So uh, then we have another um, uh, kind of stability uh, part. Um, so um, that's that's actually more that will be more than enough to uh, you know um, take any kind of vibrations that might occur so um, yeah and the nozzle has interesting shape <laughs> also aluminum and the bucket is also aluminum very cool so um, this actuator the other servo um, this can actually just kick down the bucket and then we get reverse thrust. So that is, that is really something. And in theory it could probably also be used to tune the uh, jet stream down a little bit. But I don't think that's going to be necessary. So yeah, it's really a jet with a real reverse bucket and all aluminum. The question is, is that really necessary? I mean, probably not, but it looks really nice, it has very good tolerances, good build quality, and it will probably last a lot longer than a plastic jet, so that's really nice. Oh, also we get um, um, steel, I think, or is it also aluminum? No idea. Um, it's definitely metal um, um, grid. To protect the um, to protect the jet impeller, so that's cool. And it's also anodized, so um, with the cheaper jets, it's just uh, raw steel. But this also is a nice nice detail. And I think um, in that case, because the plate is all the way around. It will be possible to screw that off and mount um, the jet in a way that um, it can be held in place by that grid and um, that would actually make the jet kind of uh, um, easy to to get in or out of the boat and um, yeah so um, don't have to epoxy everything in there's also yeah, there's also a little mounting ring here, so you don't have to glue anything. It's just screw in place, and um, yeah, and, and that's it. Wow, I just realized that bearing mount, well, it looks like they just welded it, actually. There's just so much effort going into that. I mean, yeah, it's aluminum. And this is all machined, and then they probably welded that on. So, yeah, awesome. Um, even even these levers are all made from aluminum. Um, but then these uh, these ball joints, they're plastic. But I think they're easy to replace, and yeah, it's not going to be a problem. Huh, interesting. So apparently these holes where the servo mounts go, they directly go into they directly go into the um, jet inlet. So I think um, these screws, uh, um, if you screw them on, it would make sense to put a little bit of sealing tape on them so no water gets from the inlet into the hull. Yeah. Yeah, it's strange why they didn't close that. I mean, yeah, it gives you another mounting option and um, 
it's also just uh, just easier because you can use uh, all kinds of screws and um, not only very short ones and uh, yeah but hmm, yeah I don't really like that actually that's that's not so cool but everything else looks extremely well built here we can see the shaft it's a stainless steel and the impeller in there so that is very nice and it seems like they already put grease in there because it is yeah it feels like there's grease when you spin it um, all right that's i think about it here in the instructions we can also see as i already expected it is apparently possible um, to put um, to put the jet uh, in the hull in a way that the um, that the grid holds it in place so yeah that's that's really cool and uh, yeah it's hopefully not so much it's not not that messy and to you know use a lot of epoxy to kind of just somehow fix it in place yeah so uh, that's about it for the chat and in the future i'll probably make a 3d printed hull uh, for the jet to try it out and um, yeah because um, it's easy to you know uh, mount or unmount it uh, yeah i'll probably just make a, a very simple hull first just to see how the jet performs and um, then i will upgrade it and either build an aluminum hull again um, with some thicker panels that time or uh, maybe even um, maybe even try to make a glass fiber reinforced 3d printed hull that, uh, or even carbon fiber i don't know yet that sounds like an interesting project but for that i will have to learn how to make glass fiber reinforced plastic so